Governor Deal's proposal to rescue failing schools gets a hearing in the House Education Committee. Are House members lined up to back the plan? Another House committee takes up the bill to allow sales of big league fireworks in Georgia. We're marching toward the final days of the 2015 legislative session with a lot of work yet to be done. Lawmakers starts now. Good evening and welcome to Lawmakers. I'm Bill Nygut. It is day 34 of the 2015 legislative session and I think it's safe to say that we are finally in the home stretch. So what bills are in good shape to win, place or show and which measures are still jockeying for position to stretch a metaphor. Senator Butch Miller joins us live to talk about it tonight. But first, Pat St. Clair with a recap from under the gold dome in tonight's Capitol report. Hi, Pat. Hi, Bill. First of all, we want to bring you up to date on House Transportation Chair Jay Roberts. He was hospitalized this morning after suffering from chest pains. Now, a spokesman says Roberts went to the hospital on his own as a precaution to have some routine tests run. We're told he is resting comfortably, but will be kept overnight for observation. As you know, Roberts has had a big role in the launching of the billion-dollar transportation bill. In a statement, House Speaker David Ralston said he is looking forward to having Roberts back at the Capitol soon. Governor Deal's signature education legislation moved a step closer to approval by passing out of the House Education Committee today. Shepherded by Representative Christian Coomer, one of the governor's House floor leaders, SB 133 was approved as amended on a vote of 13 to 6. Coomer said concerns about a state takeover of failing schools are unfounded. He explained community involvement is key to the success of the governor's opportunity school districts. Where you don't have the right kind of community involvement, you're not going to have any real meaningful success. So we've built in community involvement, community feedback. We've made requirements for OSD to get that community feedback at multiple steps in the process because we really do want to have community buy-in. Because what, what I keep telling the committee and what I'm, telling, what I'm going to tell the House when we bring this to a vote is we're trying to push local control down to the school level. The, it is an intervention by a state agency, but the intervention's goal is to push the control down to the local school. The panel also approved Senate Resolution 287, which asks voters to approve a constitutional amendment allowing the state to intervene and restructure chronically failing schools. We still haven't heard a lot from the House Democratic Caucus about this bill, so it will be very interesting to see what happens when it gets to the House floor. A bill to make it easier for local beer brewers to sell their products on site got a favorable vote today in a House subcommittee. SB 63, the craft beer bill, was tweaked in the committee to allow the companies to sell up to 72 ounces of beer. They could also sell tours and give away samples as a way to generate revenue. Most speakers today supported the plan, but there was some opposition to letting them sell products off site. 16 or 17 years ago when the brew pub bill was first enacted, their promise then was we won't be back asking for more. And they've come back. And I mentioned that to somebody last year and they were like, oh, that was 100 years ago. It wasn't. The last thing I want to talk about a little bit is just the limits, the limits that have been placed on here. Um, you know, candidly, I'm not sure what the purpose of the limits is, if it's to curb drinking. Um, we all know that that's, uh, that's not the way you curb drinking. You curb drinking through education, and nobody educates people about beer better than breweries. We make it. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into it. The last thing we want to do is see people come in and guzzle it. Currently, they can uh, sell a souvenir and give free samples, but nothing can leave the premises. Um, now there's going to be a, a natural inclination to have uh, more popular uh, tours because people get to leave with a souvenir. Um, and so. Uh, this souvenir is created in the back of their house so they don't have to make any initial investment um, to enjoy what we're giving them, if that makes sense. And it doesn't cost the breweries any more to provide that? Correct. No, they, I mean, they just, they're already bottling the beer and, it, and, and selling it directly to the distributor, uh, which they'll continue to do, but some of that beer that they're producing in the back, they can give away as a souvenir and charge for a tour. 
The revised bill will also allow local moonshine distilleries to also sell tours and samples. The bill's sponsor, Senator Hunter Hill of Atlanta, says he thinks his bill is better now after the changes today in the House. He believes he has support in the Senate for the amended bill if it is approved by the House. Have you ever driven past someone who was smoking in their car with children in tow? Well, some lawmakers want to make that a misdemeanor crime in Georgia. Senator Bruce Thompson sponsored SB 130, the Smoke-Free Cars for Children Act. The bill has already been approved by the Senate, and today the House Non-Civil Judiciary Committee held a hearing on it to listen to supporters and opponents. Some of the results of secondhand smoke in a confined area, which is what we're talking about in scope, are diseases such as asthma, chronic respiratory infections, ear infections, and cancer. Children consistently exposed to this are much more likely to also become addicted to cigarettes themselves. By the way, a pediatrician told me once as I was presenting a family law case in Cobb County that secondhand smoke in the material in the car, even if there's no active smoker, is extraordinarily dangerous. So why are we not banning smoking in a car altogether if a child or an adult because maybe the adult is elderly and frail. Let's go as far as we need to go or don't go there at all. Because again, you please consider the impact of unintended consequences. As it is currently written, the bill would not allow police officers to stop people who are smoking in their cars. They would only be able to issue a citation as a secondary offense after stopping a motorist for something else like speeding or running a red light. The committee tabled the discussion on the bill until next Wednesday to try to get more information on how the law would be enforced. And finally tonight, as expected, the House and the Senate do not agree on the budget for the next fiscal year, starting in July of 2015. The House officially rejected the Senate's version of the $21.8 billion plan and requested a conference committee. The Senate agreed, and the Joint Committee will be meeting over the next couple of days. Both sides pretty much agree on the amount of the budget. They just disagree on how it's allocated. We will keep you posted on that. There's Bill, back to there you. There you go. That's a shot. All right. Thank you very much for that report, Pat. We also want to send out our best uh, uh, to the chairman of the Transportation Committee in the House. We hope he's doing well. Um, uh, we're at the start of a very full week at the Capitol now with some key bills still up in the air. Joining us tonight, who I, Jim Galloway, who I just turned to uh, uh, a minute ago, is with us. He's the political writer for the, political, uh, for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Political Insider is his daily blog. And Senator Butch Miller, a Republican from Gainesville, joining us with the Senate to-do list. Thank you both for being with me. I'm going to learn how to talk again and move this conversation <laughs> forward. Senator, uh, you're an administration floor leader over there in the Senate. That's the correct. education bill has been a big part of what you've had to deal with this mm -hmm. session. It's now out of your hands over there in the House. Um, are you anticipating that there's going to be some problems, difficulties getting this thing resolved on their side? Um, we're starting to hear some Republicans over there complain that the governor, they don't like the plan. It's too bureaucratic. They feel as if the governor has pushed them a little too hard this session. What do you think about all that? Did you say go, uh, Republicans complain? <laughs> oh, shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> shame on you, Bill. I don't think that the, um, that the uh, measure will have a, a great deal of difficulty. You know, there's a lot of difference between getting 51 votes and getting two-thirds votes. And that is a challenge, always a challenge, always has been, always will be. Uh, I think that the uh, House will perform admirably, as did the Senate on the uh, Opportunity School District bill. I got a lot of calls. I got a lot of emails, a lot of letters, uh, a lot of personal testimonies from people uh, on this bill. And frankly, I don't think I got one single call, letter, or email from a parent that was in this, these school districts that was not in favor of it. And that's what you're really after. You're really after the, the parents' view. What, is it, what, is it, what do they want for their children? What is best for their child? We have lawmakers and we have media and we have uh, administrators contacting us, but when you hear from the parents, you know you're hearing from the heart and soul. The, uh, the plan that the governor uh, has talked about, or as people are talking about, would start rather small, a small footprint. That's correct. You, you don't want to take over uh, 100 schools at a time. You're talking maybe 10 schools, 15 schools as a starting point? T 20 at a max. Okay. 20 at a maximum, but I wouldn't anticipate that the first year. I wouldn't anticipate a very few schools. So the question then becomes, is that a big enough footprint for all of this new uh, bu bureaucracy, the mechanisms that you're putting in place? 
Well, I think as uh, Representative Coomer stated very eloquently in the uh, uh, entry intro, that uh, this is really going to be on the local level. You're going to have community involvement. You're going to have buy-in from stakeholders. You're going to have parents. You're going to have administrators and business people from those communities that are really and truly uh, stakeholders in that community and really want to improve that school district. And we have to build communities that value education. Mm -hmm. And when we have communities that value education, then we will be able to put education first. When a 12-year-old today uh, that happens to have been in a opportunity school district, when that school is taken over and he's 12 years old and he graduates at 17 or 18 and he realizes, he or she realizes he's gotten a better education as a result of this and he realizes, he or she realizes that he'll have opportunities at technical schools, at college, at advanced jobs that he wouldn't have had otherwise and he sees his peers and he sees that he has progressed as a result of education, then we build education as a valued commodity in our communities. Jim Galloway, have to do. you want to jump in? Well, um, my one question is, in, in the Senate, of course, uh, uh, you all passed this, uh, this, this measure, th these measures with, uh, with the help of one Democratic vote. That's correct. Uh, you'll need more of that in the Senate. And I realize that you're on the outside. In the House. In the House, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you'll need more than that. And I realize you're on the outside, but sure. have you picked up any signals as to whether you're going to get those Democratic votes? Uh, I have picked up signals that we're going to have uh, a bipartisan uh, participation and bipartisan passage in the House, and I'm very encouraged by that because this is for all Georgians. This is not not the Republican Georgians, the Democratic Georgians, the black, the white Georgians, the, the Hispanic Georgians. This is for all Georgians, and this encompasses both urban and rural areas, and, uh, and that's important because we have to improve education for all Georgians. Can we move on to another? Because, by the way, we sure. should say that we now expect, I think, uh, the governor's office is saying expect a vote on this in the House on Wednesday, quite likely, correct? As I understand it, and uh, I look for it to pass. I look for it to do very well. Okay. Um, pass with changes that will take it to a conference committee? Um, there, there were at least a couple of amendments, I think, in I, committee in the House did it. I think with some very minor changes, some, some tweaks that have come to light in the, in the process, but no uh, substantial changes in the bill itself and the policy itself. Okay, terrific. Um, let's talk about transportation. Sure. Um, we're still waiting for a final outcome on that legislation. And here we do have some relative differences between the Senate funding of this billion dollar bill and the House uh, uh, version. Your colleagues in the Senate, uh, led by Tommy Williams, decided to go for a lower excise tax. That's correct. 24 cents as opposed to 29.2, and then making up some of the difference with other kinds of fees, including rental car fee. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it, it leaves you short. Yes. Uh, by at least 150 million, if not more. I thought everyone agreed you've got to have at least a billion dollars. Well, what the Senate uh, vote did was get it into a conference committee, and that's where you hammer out the details. I think that the conference committee will come forward for the House and the Senate, something that we can all agree upon, something that will get us to that billion dollar mark. And really and truly, we're making up ground. We're, we're having to make repairs and do upke upkeep on uh, uh, infrastructure that have been, has been neglected for years. And that's just going to be very, very important. When we think about, I mean, when was the last time you recall a new road being built? A new road. I mean, a totally new road. Was it 400? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> East West Connection. It, it, there you yeah, go. I mean, that's it, right. It's been there years. Go. And so, you know, we've got to maintain what we have and we've got to plan for the future because economic development and transportation truly go hand in hand and we cannot have one without the other. And a billion dollars is a lot of money by anyone's measure. Even the federal government. Let me ask. Let me ask you on in in, in the uh, in in when with Senate passage, of course, it was all all Republican votes. Mm -hmm. It goes to conference. When it comes back to the Senate, mm -hmm. are you going to be having to, to rely on this the same formula? Have you got any any way to appeal to to Democrats? Uh, and is it is it going to be governed by a caucus position? I think you'll uh, you'll have uh, a wider support when it comes back, and I think that you'll see both Democrats and Republicans on board. And I think there were some key issues that, uh, that Democrats uh, liked, and uh, hopefully we'll have those incorporated. And there are a lot of key issues that uh, Republicans liked, and that's why it passed 
in the in the Senate. Mm. Jim, and, why did Tommy Williams, the chair of education of transportation, decide to go for a lower excise tax? Why not just stick with the twenty nine point two? I got to I've got to assume that he he didn't have the votes. Because why though? Is because, it the concern that they're going to be viewed as uh, as as uh, voting for a tax increase? Uh, uh, yes, exactly, precisely. And you still had some uh, some senators who weren't convinced that this wasn't a tax increase. Uh, you had uh, William Ligon, I think uh, Josh McCoon. You had uh, 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 Bill Heath and a few and, and a few others. Uh, and what what instead uh, you, what you had was you had uh, some uh, additional fees. The birthday uh, uh, tax making a comeback. Uh, an attempted comeback. I think it was it was limited in the twenty five dollars was the proposal was per twenty five dollars. Yeah, that's correct. Per year, right. that's correct. But, you, but what you've got, you do have some concerns. I, I know you have concerns over in the House that that these that these extra fees were not dedicated fees dedicated to transportation. That they were they were they would go into the general fund and would rely on the year to year appropriation by the legislature. And a couple of key issues that uh, that you mentioned about the the aspects of the bill itself. You know, we're going to. Be, uh, pay $200 million toward debt. And right now, we, we're having to, we're dedicating that going forward to go ahead and pay down that debt. We got to pay down debt that was from our predecessors. Mm -hmm. And really, we've got to, we got to catch up. We've got some catch up to do in transportation across the board. Plus, we, uh, a part of the uh, Senate version was to establish a, a, a tax reform a study looking at all these taxes, looking at these, these issues, and trying to bring them together. So, Senator, it, it, but with with respect to, to Jim's point that that uh, your colleagues on both sides of the building really really reluctant to be viewed as raising taxes. Certainly, don't, don't you really get to a point where uh, if everybody agrees you've got to raise a billion dollars just to keep pace? that you've really got to gulp and go ahead and cast that vote and be willing to take whatever heat may come from that? Well, in our, our governmental budget, just like our business budget and just like our household budget, first we say, where can I save some money? Okay. You know, maybe I can cancel uh, cancel my newspaper, or maybe I can oh, please cancel don't. my cable. <laughs> <laughs> that gets, <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, where, where do I save some money? And I think that's what we've been doing. We've been trying to save some money. And then we, you have to add to that, you know, some opportunities to increase revenue. And as uh, my wife likes to say, many hands like make light work. <laughs> and you know, if you get everyone involved paying a little bit, then you succeed. But on the other hand, you also have have, have many people in the legislature saying, if you're going to have to do what people think is raising taxes, well then go for the whole hog. Don't but, don't go right, for the exactly. go, point. Exactly. Don't go right. for it. Don't go for the right. hindquarters and then have to come right. back for the legs. That, yeah. that was exactly my point. Yeah. So um, we'll see. All right, look, we're going to take a break. Love for you to stay with us. We have a lot more we want to talk about. So Senator Butch Miller, stay tuned. Sounds like fun. Thank you. All right. Still ahead on lawmakers tonight. Senator Miller will continue our conversation about the to-do list in the closing days of the session. Lawmakers will be right back. Next time on Nature, Ireland has one wild river that divides it in two. For one year, this native son will make the Shannon his home. I want to find the hidden places and the creatures living there. But those creatures may be vanishing. We live in a country that's undergoing rapid change. Animals aren't good at adapting to fast change. Part of GPB's Why Wednesday, this Wednesday at 8. This is 88.5 FM, Atlanta's new source for your news and information. Good morning. Let's start the conversation. What's on your mind, Atlanta? We want to hear from you. The news and information you've been looking for is here on 88.5. From Peachtree City to Piedmont Park, from Norcross to Decatur, GPB Atlanta is the source for stories from your community. All news, all information, all day. Right now I'm about 100 feet high, traveling at about 50 miles an hour, just thinking about where I should go next. Do you have any ideas? Visit us on our Georgia Traveler Facebook page. Gotta go!
On this date, March 23rd, 1861, Civil War storm clouds continued to gather as Georgia's secession convention adopted a new state constitution, the Georgia Constitution of 1861. The document was put up for public ratification later that year. It marked the first time Georgia voters were allowed to vote on a state constitution. Welcome back to Lawmakers. Jim Galloway from the Atlanta Journal of Constitution still with us. And so is Republican Senator Butch Miller, an administration floor leader in uh, the Senate. Um, Senator, uh, let's start with um, a bill that has had a lot of emotion invested in it. Uh, the bill that would that began in the Senate, which would provide health insurance for families with autistic children. And before we give you a chance to weigh in, Jim Gallo, we have some late breaking news on what's happening. Right, right. We had we passed the Senate. Passed the Senate. Uh, it it was in uh, in House committee in, in the House Insurance Committee today. And uh, Richard Smith, the uh, chairman, uh, a Republican out of Columbus, said he is not going to br bring it up. It's because because he says it, it affects too few it, it only affects uh, 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 families that get their insurance through small business and and only 15 percent would be affected so uh, it kind of reflects off uh, some comments made by the governor uh, a week ago in which he said if you really want to address the problem you have to go after the big insurance companies and you have to do that by going through Congress. Senator, this is the second year that the autism bill has been uh, uh, up for consideration and uh, according to what Jim Galloway is saying it looks like it goes down again. Your feelings about where this stands? Well, I hear Jim's uh, report with great disappointment. I would say that uh, would you rather have part of something or all of nothing? Right now, we've got all of nothing. And if you can only help a few children, well, let's, let's help a few children. We love to help thousands and thousands and thousands of children with autism. And we know from the, uh, from the, uh, uh, the data that this is a growing concern that it is just been, it's growing exponentially over the years. And the number of children that are affected is dramatic. And even if, as you say, we don't be uh, helping a few children, why not help a few children? Let's help all we can. Um, when I interviewed the speaker uh, about the big issues uh, in the session this year, we, we talked about the autism bill. And, and he said, and I'm sure this won't come as news to you, that he's a little concerned about it because he thinks it puts another burden on small businesses. And he's worried about that. So uh, you've got to wonder if that's underlying some of what's happening in the House with this measure. Well, certainly it is. And, and I'm a small business person, and I don't want my expenses to, to go up. But, you know, we all have... Uh, a certain social responsibility to help those who are in need, to help those who can't help themselves. And this would be an opportunity to help help those children. With all due respect to Representative uh, Chairman Smith, fine man, I know he makes good decisions. Uh, I hope that we will continue to be able to visit this uh, in the future. And this is a, a need that we addressed in day one of the Senate. Jim, this has been paired with for a long time medical marijuana. And and what which it, seems seems to be on its which way. Which seems to be working. Renee Unterman in the Senate, who's who's also one of the main forces behind the autism bill, had uh, said that she'd embraced Alan Peake's legislation and the many conditions that he includes for coverage in it. And uh, she has got to be especially disappointed to hear the news that you're you, you have You have to wonder what the retaliation uh, might be in the Senate side. One question for, for Senator Miller is, is how, how common is, it with, with, within the, uh, with major carriers of insurance, mm -hmm. how common is, is autism coverage? Uh, because I, I know there are, there, there are many people who have that kind of coverage. Who have that kind of coverage, but you have to specify that. And businesses have to, to specify that kind of coverage if they won't, won't it. Let, uh, let me, with all due respect, and I, I want to compliment Senator Uderman. She's been absolutely magnanimous on this issue uh, and on the medical marijuana issue this session and really worked hard to get a resolution to that medical marijuana as well as the autism. Let's talk a little bit about the religious freedom uh, sure. bill. Um, we uh, all of a sudden had uh, the conservative uh, commentator, blogger Eric Erickson over there on AM 750, also the editor or blogger for uh, Red State, uh, one of the big uh, conservative blogs. He's suddenly saying that uh, people like the speaker uh, for not getting behind this strongly are failing their constituents who deserve this protection, but he's also going after the governor. And the other day said that that if the governor doesn't stand up and say that he will support this measure, 
He wants uh, Republican lawmakers to refuse to support education or transportation. That's a very personal kind of fight. That is a personal kind of fight, and he is entitled to his opinion. Yes. But I will tell you, uh, this governor has led with, with uh, discernment. He's led with judgment. He has uh, gone out and tackled issues like education that were, you know, uh, in his second term. Did he really need this fight? But no, maybe not. But he took it on, and I respect that and appreciate that. Let me let me ask you. Uh, I mean, we've got a we've got a a, a special subcommittee, uh, House subcommittee meeting to, uh, meeting tomorrow, tomorrow. to uh, for a two hour hearing on on uh, SB one twenty nine. This is the Josh Bakun Re Religious Liberty Bill. And if you kind of read the tea leaves, uh, there's some interest on the House side of inserting a, an anti-discrimination clause in, in the text of the bill, just to make it clear that this bill is not intended to be used by, 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 by people who, who, don't, who, who don't want to use, uh, uh, provide this service to this customer and such. Do you think, is, is this something that uh, the, the governor would, would accept? Well, I can't speak for the governor, but I would say that uh, the governor has been uh, looking for a resolution to this for quite some time. And um, and I think that 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 would probably help in my view, but you know I can't speak for for his position. Would it would it would it would it, uh, would it have traction in the Senate? I think so. I think I think it'd have have traction in the Senate. And anything that would help move these things forward. And you know we 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 come to these issues and uh, we talk about uh, compromise from time to time. And we were talking about compromise uh, this past week in my local media. And uh, they said, well, why are y'all going to compromise on this? And I said, well, if you, you show me a man that won't compromise, I'll show you a man with a failing business and a miserable marriage. We all have to compromise <laughs> at time to time. But that doesn't mean you go back on your principle. That doesn't mean you violate your oath. That doesn't mean you violate your beliefs. That means you work together to, to accomplish something. I think that the House bill uh, will have some insertions and some, uh, some issues that uh, or some advantages Then maybe we can get it passed. All right, uh, Senator, a little personal note here. Sure. We talked transportation. There isn't a whole lot of money for transit in that transportation bill. You, as a leader <laughs> of the Georgia Automobile uh, uh, Dealership Association, uh, I learned tonight from Jim Galloway, you used to take the bus in from Gwinnett County to get to the Capitol every day. I don't take the transit as often as I once did. But, uh, the Gwinnett County Transit, I pick it up uh, at exit four in uh, Gwinnett County and, and come down uh, 985 is the uh, is the 101 is the bus. So and, and well, you think he'd be really invested in more money for transit, wouldn't you? Well, or 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 or, or, <laughs> or maybe not. Or, 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 yeah. There may be or, some very very might, big bu right. buses on That's his right. Lot. All right. <laughs> One last thing, because I promised it in the opening, we got a big fireworks bill to sell big time fireworks in Georgia. Is there any doubt in your mind this thing is going to get through, and we're going to have them next Fourth of no, July? No, HB 110 has has passed the House. Right. It's, it, it is lodged in the bosom of the Senate. Uh, it has become the the favorite child of Jeff Mullis, the Senate uh, Rules Committee chairman. Uh, he posted a very large sign outside his office last week that showed the House vote and clearly marked all the no votes as a warning. <laughs> um, you know, considering the Mullis likes to play various kinds of music in yes, his Rules yes. Committee, they make this legal. We have no idea what he's going to set off at the start of a <laughs> Rules Committee. <laughs> All right. Look, we're out of time tonight. Uh, Senator Butch Miller, an administration Florida leader in the Senate, we're so grateful to you for being here tonight. Thanks uh, very much. We look forward to watching you these last days of the session. My pleasure. I appreciate both of you very much. Jim Galloway, my colleague from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, always great to have you here. Thanks for being with us, Jim. So day 34 of the 2015 session is now in the books. Six more days left on the legislative calendar. We'll be back tomorrow night with Representative Carolyn Hughley to talk about Democratic issues in the House. In the meantime, stay in touch with us on social media or email us, lawmakers at gpb.org. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.
This is a GPB original production.